Hey guys, Carol Sivy with another review. This time I'll be reviewing the Deluxe Ryuso Caliber from Kishiryu Sentai Ryu Soldier. This is a final power up weapon that can be used by all six Ryu Soldiers and includes the Red Ryu Soul Metallic version. So, let's get started. First up, we'll look at the Red Ryu Soul Metallic version. Now, despite the name, this is more than just a metallic colored version of the Red Ryu Soul. Comparing it with the original one, the first thing you'll notice is that it now switches from solid red plastic to clear red plastic. And even though the silver part of the upper head was already a metallic color, they've now changed it to a slightly deeper metallic silver, almost like a metallic gray. And you can see that there is this very interesting metallic red color that I've seen only before with uh, the red metallic Gundam markers. This was a slightly different shade for the eyes. Flip them into night mode. Where we can see a lot more of that metallic red color all throughout. And with, with what looks to be a slightly different shade of gold, even. Not to mention, there's now a bit of a sparkling hollow foil effect to the shield sticker. And we can flip it over the back and see that all of that metallic paint has been added to the Kishiryuo head. Which definitely adds a little bit of appeal because as you can see there was some bits that were just plastic on the original. But with the metallic version the whole thing is painted which has a very nice look to it. Unfortunately it would technically clash with the colors of the actual Kichiryo, since it doesn't have the colors. And just for a quick demonstration, let's use it in the Yuso Changer. And the Ryuso Ken. And you can hear that it has the same sounds as the one that comes with the changer, so it has that pin set. Next, we'll move on to the main part of this set, the Ryuso Caliber itself. Obviously, this was modified from the Ryuso Ken, though the retooling is heavier than the Gaiso Ken was. You can see they have now changed it to a nice metallic red and gold color scheme. And the big change here being this large night visor that goes over the head. That's a bit more elaborate than the original. For comparison, you can see that it's a lot more knight-like or even dragon-like than the very dinosaur-like one of the original. And it extends to a new covering for the back handle. You can see it's got an eye between a slat visor similar to that of the Ryuso Changer, as well as the colors for the main five Ryu soldiers along the back of it. You see that they didn't change, didn't paint this part down here. You also see that the blade has been changed to a clear, a clear green color, with metallic gold and chrome gold for the inner part of the blade. So signing off with John, and of course this takes two AAA batteries as per usual. You'll hear the startup sound, as well as see that this has yellow lights this time instead of red ones. So we've got the basic attack sounds, two alternating sounds, and one thing you'll notice is that the sounds activate immediately when you press the trigger, unlike with the Rizoken where they activate when you release the trigger.
And that's because this doesn't have any sounds that are dependent on pressing and holding down the trigger. Now for the transformation, or for the power-up using this, it's as simple as opening and closing the jaw. Let's just get a different angle on that. And that gives us the transformation for the Noblesse Reed Soldiers. For example, here we have Noblesse Reed Soldier Red. And the name is based on the French phrase Noblesse Oblige, which translates to Nobility Obligates, and means that those in privilege are obligated to help out the less fortunate. As you can see, it's definitely a less elaborate power-up than Max Russell Red was, being essentially this large cape and collar with these tassels that go along the front. Though what does make this different is that this can technically be used by any of the Russell soldiers, since it just involves them using the Russell caliber. And of course, with this being another version of the Russell Ken, the main thing it can do is make use of Ryu Souls, like the included Red Ryu Soul. And so we'll announce out the sounds, and this time instead of announcing the soul name, it'll actually announce, at least for these, the Kishiryu it's associated with. So then we can close the jaw and start up the special attack sound. And that elevates the Extreme Dino Slash. And again, it's a bit more simplified of a system where you just have to open and close the jaw once and not have to build up power. In fact, opening a new jaw doesn't do anything in this case. And as usual, the button to release the resoles is here on the side of the jaw. And of course, finally, like with the other two swords, this is compatible with all resoles. However, since there are so many, and so many that I own, like with the Geisoken, I'll be saving the demonstration for all the ones I have for a separate video. So, for the sake of this video, I'll just be showing some example ones for the different sounds you can get. So, let's use a second transformation Ryuso, in this case the gold Ryuso, as Ryuso Gold is the other main user of the Ryu other main user of the Ryuso caliber. So for all the transformation souls, you get the Extreme Dino Slash. Next we have the Guy Soul. That elevates the ancient Gaiso Edge. Then we have a Kyoryu So, so this time the Merimera So. It's the ultimate di Dino Slash. Ah! 
Then we have a normal Yusou, in this case the or the Yusou. Now for these ones, they have a different standby sound and actually have a different attack name depending on the soul. So in this case we had the Ora Ora Dino Slash. And for example of one that's outside of the normal set, we have the Cure User Soul. which simply activates the Super Dino Slash. And any time you close the jaw, that reactivates the transformation sound. And there we go. Overall, while it is interesting that the final item for the Ryu Soldiers is just another version of the Ryu Soken, I wouldn't say that this is a phoned-in toy. They definitely did change up the sounds quite a bit, and even the design changes a lot more dramatically than the change from the Ryu Soken to the Gai Soken. One detail I especially like is the actual helmet part, where you can see it has this kind of black paint integrated into the sort of grey plastic, to give it a look like it's made of marble, and that same effect was used on the Ted Legacy Gashat in Kamen Rider x -Aid. So that's a very nice touch, it definitely gives it a bit of character. Of course, it does include at least one new soul, so you can get some sounds out of it. But there's definitely one where it you get the most out of it if you have a lot. And as you'll see from that separate video, there are definitely a lot of different activation sounds to go along with all the different new souls. And so, next time I will be doing a separate demonstration of the different new souls that I have, like I did with the Gaiso Ken. But as far as this goes, I can definitely recommend it, and that brings us to the end of the Rear Soldier toy line. I can definitely say that this was a fun and solid one. On the roleplay side, it definitely revolved mostly around the Rear Souls and the Rear Soken, but that is the kind of thing they were going for these days, and for the most part, it works out pretty well because you definitely do have a lot of different sounds you can make from it, and it is cool that you can basically boost up both collections at the same time because we also had cases of the mechs, just about every mech in the line, including a Soul. so if you had those they could add to the playability that you get out of the changer and the sword. Not to mention the toy line, the mech line rather, was definitely one of the best in years. The mix and match gimmick of the Kishiju was very creative and definitely led to a lot of creative combinations as well as a lot of creative possibilities. Not to mention, it's a very sturdy, very solid system. I have been playing with the different Kijiryu on and off throughout the year, and I can definitely say that I have not had any breakages of the joints, which is very good because with our last Dino Team Sentai, that was one of the issues where, because of the clip system they used and because a lot of the toys were kind of revolved around having this extra piece in them, that weighed down the joints, there were a lot of breakages of those clips. So, you know, at a certain point, you either had to improvise or, you know, basically just try to replace those clips in some way. But that's not the case with the Kishi, where you can just very easily take them apart, put them back together, just piece them together in whatever way you want to, and it's a very nice system that I hope inspires future systems for Sentai Max. I definitely say I had a lot of fun with the Reed Soldier toy line, and I hope that for those who collected it, they did as well. So we'll have to see what happens with next year's Super Sentai. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, 
And if you're new and would like to see more, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. And for now, this is Karo Swifty, riding off.